Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today we are down in, Mi in Miami, South Miami, almost to Homestead. And this is a really long drive for us, but people do have problems and of course I'm trying to help as much as I can. Just a real quick note here at the beginning of the video, I urge you, if you would like our service, sign up online. We are extremely busy, truly hundreds and hundreds of calls um, you know, every day. Uh, it seems like we're the only company that does this, but I urge you to sign up online if you would like for us to uh, do your job. Let's take a look at what we're going to do. So basically, this portion of the house, as you can see, is just an addition, and it was probably a patio at one time, and it was enclosed over the years. You can kind of see the moisture already on this wall, but what's happening is the room floods you know, all the way around and in the center of the room as well. So what we need to do is to put our footer pipe in, which is the styrofoam peanut pipe that we like to use. It's four inch perforated pipe surrounded by styrofoam peanuts that's placed at the footer level okay so it's only about a foot deep um, this is very root bound you can see the established trees here um, very very root bound all these bushes and trees behind us as well real cute little courtyard but you can see the size roots that are out here so we'll start by trying to make it you know as, as clean as we can we had to pull a row of pavers so that we could uh, you know, dig along the wall. We'll just set our soil over onto the side. <clears throat> but we're going to go ahead and start here by the door and come all the way down this wall. And you can see the stress cracks going on here. You see all the cracks in the wall? That tells you that there's movement of the wall. And that's caused by water. And they've tried to fix those cracks. You can see the mortar that they put in. It didn't hold at all and it never will. It's always going to be an active crack once you have a water problem. Line comes around, we'll pick up the downspout, tie that in as well, and we're going to put it into a sump basin with a sump pump right here at the end of the addition. And you can see the crack, step back, and you can see the roof line as well. <clears throat> you know, here's the end of the addition. So we'll, that's where all of that we're going to waterproof. The main house does not have a problem, and it's probably because this patio was, is probably sunk down a little deeper. Um, when it was poured, so a step down from the house to the patio. Um, from there, we're going to run solid pipe. It'll go right out by the sidewalk, and that's the engine. Already here charge. on the back corner of the foundation. And remember, this was just a patio, so really it's only just a small four inch pour. Um, it's not really, doesn't really have a footer. So what we've got to do is we want to make sure our pipe's underground and definitely below the top of the floor. So Jason's got it a little bit deeper than normal, but that's all good. This is probably the correct depth. And remember how the system works. Water floods up into the pipe, which has got styrofoam peanuts as the aggregate instead of rocks, and it's surrounded by fabric to hold it all together. The pipe is perforated, so it floods through the aggregate into the pipe and is going to be carried away all the way down and around. To the so this is a great project for the do-it-yourselfer. Um, if you're going to do it yourself and you've got a lot of tree roots in the area, remember that they only go down about six or eight inches. And it doesn't matter how big they are or how little they are, they definitely make it difficult to dig. The other thing that you'll notice here is that we're in South Florida. So you can see all the backfill and it's really nasty. Um, this was the Everglades, you know, many years ago. So they filled the area for the now 12 million people that live in Miami-Dade um, and beyond. So there's a lot of people here and of course there's a lot of housing. But do it yourself. Just believe you can do it. I promise you that you can get through all this. This is not an easy job. It's not very long. I mean, we're only putting in about 50 or 60 feet of the footer pipe, you know, around the back here to the sump basin and then the inch and a half discharge you can see I already laid it out up there by where Chuck's walking um, that's going to be the discharge pretty straightforward job should take you about a day to do I've got three real good men working on this probably take us about three to four hours so again two ways to get through you know the rock and backfill and roots one is the shovel I showed you that what we do is we cut off the sides both sides then you come back and you scrape through <coughs> cut some more sod off and the other is to use the mattock 
<clears throat> remember, Matic has a pick at one end and then a spade at the other. It's about two and a half or three inches wide. And this can easily scrape down under, <clears throat> excuse me, can easily get down under the rocks and just pry them up. And you can see, remember that this is a discharge pipe. So pretty simple. I mean, this is easily fit in that trench. It's two inches wide, inch and a half inner diameter, but we're plenty deep enough right there in order for this to discharge out to the sidewalk. So there's two ways to do it, whichever one you feel you know is better. Remember that the Matic, it's a lot of upper body strength <laughs> because you're gonna swing it. And the pick, or excuse me, the shovel is lower body. You're gonna use your legs to, to cut all the stuff Back up. here on the back, they've made real quick work of putting in this, digging the trench for the footer. Joe's right at the perfect depth. Jason, he's right coming to the perfect depth also. And again, just like digging a trench in the front yard or in the sod, remember to work backwards. Get that first easy layer off and then come back, like I showed you, cut both sides of your trench. And you can see all the gravel and stuff that is in here. There's also a thing called kakina. And this is like prehistoric shell. And that's typical in Florida as you get close to the ocean or even inland, but close to the ocean, you're gonna find kakina. It's as hard as cement. The Spanish used that to build, when they arrived here, they built all their forts and most of their foundations out of kakina. So real quick, interesting story about kakina and like Fort Matanzas in St. Augustine. That's the nation's oldest city, over 500 years old. And when the Spanish settled that, they needed to be able to make really strong fortresses. And they did this, you know, throughout all the islands and through the Caribbean, you know, all, all through there. Um, what they did was they, they took seashell, oyster shells, and they crushed them all up, and then they fired them in a kiln. And this made the Portland cement. Portland cement is what binds today's cement together. And then they used Kakina as the aggregate. And that fort, built in 1506, is still standing today. I mean, this, you know, that's what, 500 and something years old. Um, and so is the entire city. Granted, it's a small city, but it still stands today. And as you look at pictures of islands, um, you know, throughout Dominica and throughout the Caribbean, all those areas, you see those Spanish forts, they were built way back 1500s. And it's Kakina, excuse me, yeah, it's Kakina and oyster shells that they used to make the so wall. The point of that last clip was Kakina is hard, hard, hard substance. It's just like concrete. Over here where Chuck's digging the sump basin, you can see that orange substance, brown substance, that's Kakina. And you can see as the deeper we go, the more Kakina that we're hitting because this is like, it's like an island. It's like a shell island. And that was formed, you know, millions of years ago. And the only way to get through it, of course, we could use the jackhammer, but the pry bar just breaks it up and you may only get off, you know, two inches, one inch at a time, come back, clean it out and just keep on digging down through it. You will get through it. We need to get down two feet for that sump basin. He's over two thirds of the way. So about one more foot and we'll be at the right level. Another tip, if you're going to do this yourself, can you see how high the sod is here? It's way better to have your sod cut before you dig. We don't have much control over that. You know, this, this is probably on a yard service and maybe they're supposed to come today, but it's really hard to clean up your trench when you've got thick sod. So always remember to cut that sod first and it'll make your life a lot We've easier. We've been here about 35, 40 minutes and you can see the sweat. It is really humid in the mornings in Florida, especially South Florida. But as the sun comes up and you can see it's getting up in the sky a little bit. As that sun comes up, it burns off this humidity and it actually does kind of dry out. Right now, here you know, it's 100%, but you might say 200% because it is really humid. Um, be prepared, do this yourself. Of course, you want to start in the morning. Um, starting in the midday, you know, now it's 90 plus and it's really tough to do. The sweat, when you take your break, you'll cool off. Your sweat's going to keep you cool. You'll feel refreshed. Remember to stay hydrated, drink some water, and this, this job is not that hard. Okay, if you can see this tree root right here, this is a good sized root and it's got lots of little pieces underneath. You can definitely use an ax, you can use the mattock, try to break it. I'm gonna try it with a shovel just because 
we don't like to go get tools. You know, you're walking around so much, you do get tired walking around. On the average, I walk about four miles on every job site. I've put the pedometer on my phone, and you know, every day, four miles that you walk. But I'm pretty sure that I can cut this root with a shovel. Let me just show you. The secret is to cut far enough over that you can get your pipe in. Just keep, keep just like it's an ax, until it splits. Yeah, that's a big one. And it might be going down in the ground. <laughs> now there it goes. You can see I'm under it. So I could just push the pipe under there, but let's try to cut the other side. But growing sideways. But yeah, shovel can break that thing, cut it right out of there. So again, the shovel can cut just as well as the axe or mattock. It's up to you. So we almost got this section done, looking real good, but from right here you can see that stone or stucco, that does look like it's, it might be stucco and coquina, but whatever, an overpour. From here to, you can see where the shovel is, just solid. So sometimes it just takes a little while to get through. We've also got the air conditioner where you see that water dripping. That's just condensation from a window unit but that'll drop into our footer pipe. Air conditioners cause tons of problems with their discharge of condensation. I mean, this thing, especially, it doesn't matter really, even in Charlotte, when we would dig in Charlotte, you know, we, we would put in one uh, AC condensation drain a week because it puts out so much water and it comes up under the slab, you know, it creates problems, hardwood floors, they buckle, water gets under there. So if you've got an AC drip, you need to get that away from the house best is to put it into a downspout drain if you have one otherwise get it at least 20 30 40 you know, as far away from the house as possible because it will put out thousands okay, of so gallons now it's time to week. set up the sump pump this is a half horsepower Zoller M98 and it weighs about 40 pounds this is a heavy pump <clears throat> this is capable of picking up half inch solids like little rocks and picking them up through this impeller and sending them all the way out to wherever you're discharging. It's a great pump. Pumps about 60 to 80 gallons per minute. Um, here it's probably gonna pump 70 gallons a minute because we're pushing about 100 feet. But that's still almost three trash cans full of water every minute. This is a great pump and I strongly recommend that you get something similar. Do not go to Home Depot or Lowe's and buy a pump. You need to go to a plumbing supply and or you can call me uh, send me an email and I'll tell you where you can get one of these. There's a guy in Chicago, great price, same price I buy them for, um, and it's got free shipping, so you know, that's, that's not a problem. So we start by setting up the pump with the male threaded inch and a half adapter, and it screws into this port. You screw this on there it's just as tight as you can with your hand. Real simple to set this pump up, really quick. <clears throat> Next. I cut a piece of pipe that's going to be just above this bar. This is the first section of the riser. I'm going to go ahead and glue that. Good amount of PVC cement. Push that down into your fitting. Push and hold. I got a little bit too much on there. We'll wipe some of that off. Push and hold that. It tries to pop out of there, so give it just a second. And that's actually already welded on there. Next, you've got a check valve. You can get your check valve wherever you want. They're all about the same. They're going to have some type of an arrow or something telling you water flow goes this way. And it's, these are no hubs. They're set, set up to clamp onto the pipe. So loosen up the bottom one. Remember we've got our arrows pointing upwards. Slide that on. And get your clamp back in place. This check valve actually has a spot for the clamps, if you can see that little ridge, try to set them right on there. And 
and then you tighten it up with your handy dandy black and decker <laughs> somebody said oh you're a professional and you're using a black and decker that was on one of the comments i just had to laugh it, come on man <laughs> anyways five this is five sixteenths inch nut driver just as tight as you can make it make sure you tighten up all the clamps because that's just from the factory and then i'm going to loosen this top one i don't know if you can see that because i'm pointing the camera down let's lift it up there we go tighten up this one and loosen this one because this is going to accept the rest of the riser as it comes up and makes a 90 or we'll cut a hole in the sump basin to bring okay, the water so now i'm going to drill the discharge i'm using a two inch hole saw we're just going to drill right through the pit That hole is for the discharge of the inch and a half PVC. You can see it's the exact outer diameter of the hole. Now we're going to set our pump in here and connect to this discharge line. Okay, so we got this installed. You know, I made the measurement from <clears throat> the top of the check valve to the 90, and then this piece is running out. We're going to use a no hub, the black adapter, to make that slight turn. And Chuck's already laid the rest of that pipe through the trench. So we're ready to cover this section up out here. So now we're making this connection to bend with a no hub fitting. The no hub's nice because you can see it can make a degree. This is a 22. They do probably sell a fitting for that, but it might not be. So if you have a no hub, you can make that turn without worrying too much about it. This is very strong. This is used, this is to code. I mean, this is perfect. Make sure you get your bands good and tight. So now we're ready to go ahead and cover the discharge. We've got that going all the way out. Sump pumps installed. <clears throat> we're all set to go. What we're finishing up here is just a little bit more of this footer pipe. We've already cleaned off the wall on the back side. Let's take a look back there. And Joe's actually already painted it with the liquid rubber. And you can see a beautiful, nice job all the way down. So what we do is we paint the footer. This is the footer right here. And we painted that footer. We, we actually don't need to paint down here, but we always do. We clean, we clean that off and then we put the liquid rubber on there. What we want to seal is right there in the corner. That's the most important spot right there. But then we also seal up higher than the floor because water does try to flood up you know, into this. You can hear that. This is a wood frame house. So we want to make sure that we get good and sealed so that no water can get to that sill plate behind this stucco wall. And it looks really good. We're ready to lay some of the footer pipe through here. That's that peanut pipe over there. We'll lay that out and we're ready to cover this up. Okay, so we've got our footer pipe installed and you can see we've painted that wall, sealed it with blackjack number 57. And that's gonna be the, the liquid rubber is actually what it is. is rubber coating with fiberglass and asphalt as well so it's kind of a tar but it has rubber in it and that's why we like to use it it's all painted we've got a nice line that goes across got our footer pipe installed this footer pipe is we call it peanut pipe but it's actually called easy flow drain pipe and what it is is four inch perforated pipe surrounded by styrofoam peanuts that's the aggregate usually people use rock but this is actually, it works so good, so much better than gravel that we've been using it about five to seven years, somewhere in there. And, you know, to date, honestly, nobody has called us back and said, hey, it doesn't work. So we know that the system works really well and it's really looking good here. We've got it tied into the sump basin. The last thing we'll do is take this downspout. We're just going to splash it out into the yard let it come out. We'll dig a little trench right there for it so that it can get away from the footer. So it's all looking really good. Um, get this covered up and let it rain. Okay, so now we're backfilling. Just covering it up. This is the fun part. It's, it's actually quite hard because you're so tired. If you're doing it yourself, you'll, you may end up doing this two days. And of course, we just like to get it done. And that's my philosophy, you know, just do it. And if you believe you can do it, you'll get it done. It's that simple. So cover it up, backfill it, and you're all set. We've got the sump pump installed. I've showed you that already. What I like to do is just go ahead and tape around the lid so that as they cover it up, 
where anybody covers it up. No dirt gets down into the pit. Got our discharge line going out. Goes all the way out to the to the grade at the street. I'll show you that in just a second. So again, you know, this is a, a great do-it-yourself project. Save five, six to eight thousand. Um, do it yourself, materials, pump and all, you know, it's around 1500 but you still save quite a bit of money if you do it yourself. And again, what a great project. You might split it up and do it in sections, do it and take a couple days, dig your footer. You know, this was tough. It had all that coquina and stucco down there. You saw we had to use the hammer drill to get through some of that. Um, Again, the, the pry bar and the pick, that would have worked too, but looking really good. This should hold up for years and years to come. So a couple other quick notes. You know, when we call in the locate request, um, you can see AT&T's lines out here. Um, it's called Sunshine 811 here in Florida. And we called all this in. They actually send an email out and they said Florida Power and Light, that's FPL, was marked. And you can see the meter here. There is no markings. There's no red line out here for the power at all. Kind of makes you wonder, the more and more that we do jobs down here in South Florida, I can truly understand why all homeowners are terrified to have any service work done because they just don't do it. So out here at the discharge, what we like to do is we like to use, instead of using a pop-up, we put a grate on it because the pump's pretty powerful and it pops a grate right off of there. We secured this with a screw and this is a three inch 90 and it connects to the inch and a half pipe with what we call a donut. Hard to find the donut. You've got to go to a plumbing supply. If you look at some of the other videos, you will see how I've done all that. Um, sorry, it's hot and we're tired. It's, you know, we want to finish. I just didn't get that on film, but there's a hundred videos that show how that's done. Um, real simple. There's other ways to connect, but that's Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains, reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day.